Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with PDQ.com, and we're here to talk about the different run modes that you can use and deploy. Uh, there's one that's kind of the default, but we figured giving more information on what each one does isn't probably a bad idea. So the first thing we do is we're going to open up just a new package just so we can options. And right here we got run as, and the default is deploy user. This one is going to work for 99% of all your deployments. Uh, this is... It's going to use the credentials that you defined within deploy, whether it is a uh, laps or a system or account or a service account, or if your credentials, if you're feeling saucy, I wouldn't recommend it, but you, you do you, but whatever credentials you use in deploy, it's going to use those. It's going to connect to the system. It's going to run everything. And where you're going to have the admin rights 99% of the time, this is going to work great. Uh, there are some cases where it doesn't quite work. Uh, one of those that we'll show is Deploy User Interactive. This one's the same way, only it runs the desktop as interactive. So this is where if there's software, there's some software out there where even though the user doesn't have to click anything, it still requires an interactive desktop to install. Uh, that's things like Microsoft Office or Autodesk. Both of those, if you are looking to install those, that's gonna, you're going to want to run that Deploy Interactive. Still uses the same credentials, still runs the same way. It's just some software is a bit more finicky or has some special requirements. And interactive allows the user to see a pop-up or just run as if it is an interactive desktop at the time. The next one is local system. Uh, so this is still going to use the deploy credentials to connect to the system and uh, download the, the packages. But when it goes to run it to start the runner or actually run the process, it's going to use the local system host, which is going to give you all kinds of, all kinds of power. I don't think this one's going to be needed very often just because normally an admin account is going to be enough, but if there's something where it's just not working, uh, local system is going to give you access that you might not normally have. It might work just a little bit better. Uh, one thing to be worried or aware of with that one is things like uh, network path or UNC paths and network shares. Those won't be reachable with local system. So if you are going to use that, make sure everything you need downloads with the initial connection because once it starts the local system, network connectivity as far as reaching out to pull down data is no longer there. Uh, the last one is the logged on user. And so if no user is logged on, uh, it will refer or revert back to, uh, to the local system and run it that way. There is a step in there where you can basically say if there's no one's logged in, don't run it. This one that I use for uh, software where the user installed it, where it installs in the user instance over the machine instance. Things like Firefox we see a lot, many of the Apex packages. Just software where users are allowed to install it even without admin rights. If it does that, it means it's installing as their local user, not as the system, and it's a bit harder to clean up. Running as logged on user will let you go in and remove it as them. Gives you a bit more target access. It also lets you uh, reach things like uh, the current user hive in registry. So there's a few cases where that one comes in. Uh, with later versions of PowerShell, the remove Apex package, the all users now functions where it didn't for a long time, it does. So this, I use that less often, but the, definitely for using reaching the current user hive in deploy, that, that's, uh, that's kind of a big win. As far as how you set these, uh, I was showing you this one from the properties here. This is individual, to this, is specific to this package. You can also set it as a global setting where if you don't want to use deploy users as your default for some reason, it's uh, options preferences or control comma. Just come to deployments and you can set the default one right here to anything that you'd like. We just default to deploy because it works almost, almost all the time. And the last one that we can uh, do is you can change it per step. So you can start off running one and if a step is finicky or requires something different, you can change that. A good example of this is Dropbox. So if you come in here at the very top, you see it's deploy user to the program default. But if you go into the steps and you look at uh, start Dropbox, you can see right there that it is logged on user in that one. And that's just an example of our pre-built one where we had to change up the run as mode. Uh, but each individual step can have its own. Uh, so hopefully this gives you everything you need. Uh, run to deploy user if it's not, not working for you. Uh, just try each, each one and check for your results. Make sure you're getting what you want and you should be able to get uh, everything deployed. For PDQ.com, I'm Jordan, and I am not prepared for a thumbnail photo.